as there were in April. I hope that's all clear for you. Very clear. Clear as a bell, as ever, John. <laughs> Let's talk about AMC. Uh, what's the latest on the price of this cinema chain yes. that's causing such a stir? Tell us a bit well, well. Yeah, well, we're going to do this more in detail in the program before we finish at the top of the hour. Somebody's going to come on who understands the retail investor mentality. So let me just set this up for you by saying that AMC is a movie chain, chain of movie theaters. That's all it is. So their business can't really grow all that much. They just play movies. They have a thousand theaters around the country, 10,000 screens, because they have multi screen cinemas, of course. They are saddled with debt and they face very strong competition from streaming. Now, that's all I'm going to say. Let's look at the actual share price, because there is a battle going on, just as there was with GameStop back in February, between the professionals here, and some of them, of course, who are not actually based here, who are trading options. I assume they want the price to go down. I assume this is short selling. I don't really know. But the retail traders, the so-called Reddit crowd, are just piling into AMC big time, and there's no real reason for it, certainly not the fundamentals of the business. So, what do we have? Yesterday, it hit an all-time, and first of all, AMC is up 3,000% since the beginning of the year, its share price, 3,000%. And remember what I said about his business not really being able to expand all that. Yesterday, it was up 120%, 107%, and 101%. Those were my own observations. And it closed up 95%. And today, it is down 31% at $44.21. So $62 at the close last night, 44 now. And the other big news, as we said in the intro, is that AMC is selling about 11 million brand new shares to make money for themselves because apparently so many people want to buy them. You know, I mean, sometimes you just have to end by saying, well, go figure. <laughs> figure indeed. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Thanks so much, John. Uh, John Terrett there on the board of New York Stock Exchange. Julia. Oh, go figure and proceed with caution, perhaps. And as John was saying, AMC trading has been faulted several times as amateur traders grab the stock in huge volumes. Cinema chain has been the center of this so-called meme craze that's seen retail investors trying to outwit Wall Street. And the Friends is the latest example of a so-called army of small investors who congregate on online platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit. Now, AMC almost doubled in value on Wednesday, its CEO offering yeah. free popcorn to even the smallest shareholder. And as John was saying, you know, they, they struggled to turn a profit last year when the cinemas closed uh, because of lockdown. And major hedge funds bet billions that the shares would fall, but instead, that social media campaign by those amateur traders is driving a price boom. It's now up 1,400% since the start of the year. I mean, just take a look at that jump. My goodness, that's a huge amount. So let's talk to, to Andy Lee, a retail investor and one of the individuals behind what's going on at AMC. He joins us now from Taipei. And Andy, you were nodding away, nodding away sagely there to, in the background to, to what, what John was saying. John and Paul, yeah. and you. Good, well, I, mean, I think first of all, you know, what is meme investing all about? Well, it's about investing in the stock that you love and you support it with all you've got. Like, for example, buying the shares buy and hope. That's what we apes do, Juliet. <laughs> you call yourself an ape. This is a, a primal thing, a, a planet of the apes. Just explain for our listeners. Oh, that's a very good planet of the apes. Yes, we retail investors who invest in AMC and GameStop, we call ourselves apes because we are simple-minded and we are stubborn. We buy and hold, and that's all that we do. We're not bulls going long. We're not bears going short. We buy and hold. We are apes. That's what we call ourselves, Julian. And how long have you been doing this, this kind of influencer investing? Uh, well, I invest myself. I share what I do, and other people make up their own minds. I do not try to influence others. I've been doing this for um, like um, three or five years already. And you, you, you say you're not trying to influence others, but um, you, yeah. you, you are, and you are investing in what you love. But you know what? The higher yes. the price of something goes. The, the further it could fall. I mean, there's got to be that temptation to to, to profit take, to, to get out there, there quick. I mean, what, what's more of a buzz for you, that, that risk or the squeeze that you're giving institutional investors? Right, that's a very good question, Julia. What buzz me? 
Um, the squeeze you're talking about, it's because us retail investors are sharing on the social media platform that this is a free owned company that has been shorted by hedge funds. Now, we don't like what hedge funds are doing. These are good old companies that we love. Video games bought at GameStop, going to the movies, AMC. We want these companies to stick around. We don't want these companies to be shorted by hedge funds and then go bankrupt and then go to the ground. We want them to stick around. We don't want them to go into oblivion. So we support these good old companies by buying their share, going against the hedge fund, shorting good companies, providing decent jobs. Julia. But when you see that share price go up and up and up, you must be thinking, right, um, that's my pension. That's my kids' college fees. I'm going I'm to cut my losses. Uh, well, um, it's called profit taking. We tend to do that at some point, but each of us has our own price in mind, life changing price in mind. So I cannot speak for others, but I do have to take some profit taking at some time, at some point. I mean, what goes up must come down, right? You're right. Ready. Okay, so what's your, how long is this party going to go on for? At what point are you going to say, you just said you can't speak for others, but I, I want to know I, what I, your I, limit is. But I have a minute. I thought you shared all of this with your community on, on, uh, online. Share it with us. Yes, yes, yes. I do share. But I don't talk about price predictions. I don't talk about timelines. Because each of us have our own price prediction and timelines. As for me, I just want the share price to go up to a life-changing profit-taking level. That's it. That's all I can say. Well, it sounds like a, a lot of fun. You're making it sound a lot, a lot of fun rather than um, you know playing around with, with, with other people's money. So it was great talking to you. Um, and next time we, we speak, maybe we can talk about regulation too. Great talking to you, Andrew. Yes, will do. Regulations required, definitely. Thank you, Julie. Diplomats from China.